is Carrie Levin News at 10. Police and prosecutors say this is a picture of a stalker in action. He's accused of showing up at high school girls' gymnastic meets like this one with his video camera. And that may not be the worst of it. Good evening. Teen pornography, videotapes, and press clippings of female athletes are among the items seized from Richard Stevens' home. He's charged tonight with stalking a 17-year-old girl. Alert parents are being credited for helping catch Stevens before something happened to his alleged victim. Carolyn's John Croman reports. The tables were turned on Richard Charles Stevens, the man covering himself at the Dakota County Jail. He found himself on the uncomfortable end of the video camera after being charged with stalking high school gymnasts. Ongoing period of stalking and harassing behavior of high school uh, female athletes were very concerned about this case. Stevens is accused of stalking a student at Henry Sibley High School, videotaping her gymnastics meets and then calling her Monday at home. And I didn't understand what he said, and then he said, um, um, you stuck up bitch and hung up the phone. A couple of hours later, police arrested Stevens outside the girl's house. He was driving by slowly, trying to look at the address, I'm assuming looking at the address on the house to see if he did have the right house. Stevens had already caught the attention of parents at Sibley Gymnastics Meets. This snapshot was taken at Highland Park High last Saturday by a suspicious Mary Daly. He stood out. I mean, he was in the second row um, very obvious, uh, photographing people five feet away. And he would literally, you could see the camera moving right up and down from head to toe. And, and you never videotape like that. Unsure if her snapshot worked, she pulled out her camcorder and captured Stevens on video as he made his way across the gym during a break. Just to have something. If it wasn't anything, then it wasn't anything. But I figured it couldn't hurt. Stevens has been spotted at several other gymnastics meets around the Twin Cities. And when police searched his apartment in this St. Paul high-rise, they found chilling evidence of an obsession. Five photographs uh, uh, from cut out of a newspaper of teenage athletes uh, from a story about athletes to watch that uh, were taped to the back of the defendant's bedroom door. They also found a U of M women's gymnastics schedule in Stevens' apartment, but an associate athletic director there says she's had no complaints of stalkers. I think uh, student athletes are aware of, of what's going on around them, and we encourage them if they feel uncomfortable about anything that they get to us as administrators and then we'll address that. Now tonight detectives are pouring over photos and videotapes seized in Richard Stevens apartment to see how many other girls he may have targeted. In the meantime authorities are asking for your help. If you're like the parent in tonight's story and captured Stevens on tape at a high school event, Dakota County Prosecutor Jim Baxter wants to hear from you. Paul and Dye. All right, thank Thanks. you John. Twin Cityans who could bear the brunt of Crosstown Highway construction closures gathered in Richfield tonight. MnDOT held the public hearing to find out what area residents and business people think about closing parts of Highway 62 for up to four years. I think it's going to be a tough four years. I mean, if you remember when they did Highway 12 into 394, there were some businesses through there that struggled and couldn't make it. Crosstown construction is set to start next year. MnDOT will consider delaying it until Interstate 494 is widened if lawmakers immediately approve $500 million for the project. New accusations tonight over two more last-minute pardons by former President Clinton, one involving a man with Minnesota ties. Sources say Clinton's brother-in-law received about $200,000 for successfully lobbying for the prison commutation of Carlos Vignali. Vignali was convicted in a California to Minnesota drug smuggling ring. Hugh Rodham, Hillary's brother, was allegedly paid for months of work on that case and received a success fee for helping win the pardon of Almond Glenn Braswell. Tonight, the Clintons say they were unaware of the arrangements with Hugh Rodham and they asked him to return the money. He did so earlier today. An annual study on teen drug use released today is taking a different approach, turning the focus on parents. They found parents can quadruple the chances their kids will abuse drugs just by not paying attention. The problem is only one in four teens in America lives with a hands-on parent. Those are adults who set rules and expectations for their child's behavior and monitor what they do. As Carol Evans Boyd Hooper reports, it's encouraging news that parents can have a powerful influence. By the time Mariel Tracy reached the 10th grade, she had mastered some important rules of geometry. Her parents' rules she learned much sooner. They let me know that they're in control. In control and on the right track, according to a new study from the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse, which shows teens with hands-on parents and strict rules and expectations are at one quarter the risk of smoking, drinking, and using drugs as our teens 
with hands-off parents. Kids need boundaries, period. They're not Definitely. adults. It's why Carrie and Tom Tracy closely monitor the types of video games and TV shows their children are watching and the CDs they're listening to, why their kids are expected to help with household chores, eat meals as a family, and why Muriel has a curfew. The study says those are the very things that lead to better relationships between teens and parents. Indeed, 47% of teens living in hands-on households report excellent relationships with their fathers, but only 13% of teens in hands-off households do. They've given their kids so much freedom to kind of go out and be their own person, and I think that the underlying message that they're sending is that to the, to the to this kid is that they don't care. The mother of this little girl couldn't agree more. It really gives us some good data to show what makes a difference. Hennepin County Attorney Amy Klobuchar sees plenty of kids in trouble and sees the difference in the ones who aren't. It's the kids where the parents get involved and set expectations. Uh, they don't see themselves as pals or friends of their children. They see themselves as parents and it is their job to set the rules and set expectations for their kids. Boyd Hooper, CARE 11 News, Eden Prairie. You can learn more about that study by logging on to care11.com. You'll find a link there to the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse. He's been called one of the worst role models in the music industry, but despite nationwide protests over his Grammy nominations, Eminem still walked away a winner. Whoa! Woo! Mr. Controversy, Eminem! Eminem, yes! Yeah. In an almost subdued acceptance speech for Best Rap Album, Eminem thanked his fans and Grammy voters as one of three Grammys he won tonight. Outside, protesters gathered criticizing the rapper for anti-gay lyrics. The openly gay Elton John has also drawn fire for agreeing to perform with him. A Brooklyn Center police officer cleared of sexual harassment charges must be allowed to return to work. A Hennepin County judge upheld an arbitrator's decision ordering John Barlow reinstated. In 1998, a jury found Barlow not guilty of harassment, but he was fired in 1999. Brooklyn Center is also ordered to pay around $50,000 in back wages. The city may appeal the decision. A Cottage Grove police officer is charged with shoplifting from Target while on duty and in uniform. 45-year-old Luke McClellan is accused of stealing more than $270 worth of items from the Cottage Grove store. McClellan is on paid suspension until the case is resolved. University of Minnesota President Mark Udolf says he will sit down soon with Governor Ventura to work out their differences. The two met at a celebration for the U's 150th anniversary. Udolf and Ventura have been conducting a war of words over the governor's frugal budget allocation to the U. Maybe odd to say, but you know, at, at a personal level, I feel very cordial. I hope he does toward me. I like the guy. He comes from the same sort of family that I come from. The university requested more than $200 million from the state. Ventura's budget offers about a quarter of that. Federal investigators now say the crew of a U.S. submarine detected a ship in the area more than an hour before sinking that Japanese fishing boat. A report on the crash also says a crewman watching sonar readings told them he was distracted by civilian guests on board. The Navy's refusing comment until a court hearing on Monday. Wall Street had a bad reaction to the government's higher than expected inflation numbers. The Dow closed down 204 points while the Nasdaq dropped 49 points. The drop started after the Fed reported the biggest increase in consumer prices in nearly a year. Well, stocks aren't the only thing that took a tumble today. This is the last section of Milwaukee County Stadium to come down. Demolition crews leveled the last two sections to make way for the soon-to-be-completed Miller Park. The new home of the Brewers is about 96% complete. The first game is scheduled just six weeks from now. That's kind of encouraging. Mm -hmm. It's still really cold out there, though. Uh, it's still ahead. Ken Barlow has a forecast that will make it seem even more like winter. And later in sports, the Timberwolves try to get back on track. Plus, find out what impression people have of you based solely on your haircut. And next... They read our recipes, our school closings, and became our good neighbors. Coming up in the extra, we're going on the road in search of the legends of WCCO Radio. You're watching the news on CARE 11 with Paul Majors, Diana Pierce, Ken Barlow, and Randy Shaver. This is CARE 11 News at 10. Now more than ever, there's a Toyota for you. Take a closer look at Corolla with more power than ever, more fun than ever, and more value than ever before. 
Especially now with Corolla's $169 a month lease for 36 months with 2619 do it signing. With a price this affordable, no wonder it's the world's best selling car. More value than ever. Look now before they're gone at your Toyota dealer. Get to the biggest President's Week sale ever at Slumberland Furniture and get monumental store-wide savings. Plus, pay absolutely nothing for an entire year. No down payment, no monthly payments, and no interest for 12 long months. Get a Simmons Beautyrest no-flip pillow top queen-size set, the state-of-the-art mattress you never need to flip, for just $5.99. Look at this new bed crafted in warm pine, just $2.99. And get this sumptuous leather sofa with nail head trim for just $9.99. Hurry to the biggest President's sale ever, only at Slumberland Furniture. Wow, great face. Ooh, what a steal. Excuse me. Kind of like the TCF check card. It's free, with free long distance minutes. And you never have to worry about running out of checks. Aw. I gotta get to the bank. Come to TCF for the free TCF check card and anything else you need. TCF, Minnesota's most convenient bank. Mom's gonna love this. She just doesn't understand me. What's to understand? I mean, what is that, Michael? Is that what you think I sound like? Yes. Mr. Doyle, do you use a cellular phone? What's come between you two is static. Here, Sprint PCS built the only all-digital, all-PCS nationwide network, so your calls are clear. Thank you. Sprint PCS, 2,000 minutes, all with nationwide long distance. Chrysler minivans continue to receive more and more and more awards. Now it's time to reward you with the Chrysler and Jeep Rewards Program. For a limited time, you can get 0.9% APR financing or a $1,500 cash allowance on minivans. So reward yourself today. Drive home one of our award winners. And that's better than taking home a trophy. See your Chrysler dealer today. This is WCCO, St. Paul and Minneapolis. They're the voices we grew up with, reflections of a golden era at one Twin Cities radio station known simply as The Good Neighbor. Back in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, no radio station in the country had better ratings than WCCO. And it was due in large part to a remarkable staff of announcers. Some like Jurgen Nash and Franklin Hobbs have passed away, but others are living legends. Tonight in the Extra, Carol Evans' Boyd Hooper catches up with some of your favorite old neighbors from WCCO Radio. You can open a history book to see what Minnesota used to look like. But this is the way Minnesota used to sound. This is WCCO, St. Paul and Minneapolis. If voices could be cast in concrete, we don't want to swing on a can of meth. These voices would be monuments. This is Joyce Lamont. To good radio and good neighbors. I'll have uh, two guests with me this afternoon on the Viken show. Take Howard Viken, who must have read 100,000 school closings during 39 years at CCO. Where do you suppose you'd find him today? We don't have many school closing announcements down here in Florida. Only as far from a Minnesota winter as he could get. It's always the morning man. Let the dog out, make the coffee. Howard is still up most mornings by six, reading two papers on the balcony of his Naples high rise within a stone's throw of the beach. Life is treating me beautifully. Beautifully, yeah. Very lucky. Howard is removed from Minnesota all but a couple months of the year, but not. From Minnesotans. I said, why do you ask? She said, well, Dr. Smith only sees those kind of people. <laughs> he and wife Mary are out tonight with an old sponsor. Naples has a knack for attracting Minnesotans. To this day down in Florida here, why well, I, uh, I see somebody in the grocery store or at the gas station or in a restaurant and they'll say uh, uh, something like, aren't you Howard Viken? Uh, and I, you know, and they say, yeah. They remember the bald head, I guess. They remember this voice Two. We're riding high, baby. We don't want to swing on a can of mint. Poor boy from the Iron Range, trying to find love and happiness among the swells in Naples, Florida, and finding it. Yes, Steve Cannon is in Naples, too. But what about the little cannons? Twins play Cleveland tonight. Morgan Mundane, 
Backlash LaRue. My good fellow. And Ma Linger. Underneath that crass exterior of yours, there lurks absolutely nothing at all. We thought we saw them hanging out at Steve's Minnesota pad. He assures us they're in Florida, too. Morgan and I go up to the dog track. Mundane and I. He does a little wagering. Backlash LaRue. If you want to see him, he's up at Barefoot Beach, a little north of here. Ma Linger came out here in her bikini, knocked the guy's eyes out. Knocked their eyes out. It was fab. Cannon still makes brief appearances on the evil neighbor, as he's known to call it, and only misses the daily grind when, say, a Monica Lewinsky comes along. That would have been great. I could have had a ball with that. Long ago, he got the money, and now... I got the sunshine. I hope you'll look for Miracle White Fabric Softener. What Joyce Lamont got in 1950, she still has. Yes, hot chicken salad. A full-time job in radio, now at KLBB. Reed Hag along with Joyce Lamont. You could have retired. Ah, never. She's still sharing recipes and travel tips. The King Jubilee Show with hula dancing and Hawaiian songs and dances. Just like the golden years at 830 where she'll never forget the day she and co-host Bob DeHaven learned of their 69% market share. I said to Bob, only 69%? I thought everybody listened to us. 100%. He said, now don't be silly. There are other stations, you know. Just no other stations that sounded like this. Well, I sat alone with a feeling of dread, suspicions of Lutefisk danced in my head. Where are these old guys? <laughs> Are they still around? Charlie Boone and Roger Erickson are still around, though Roger and his wife are on the road a lot more, hosting tours for Dayton's travel. How it came about, I'm not quite sure. Charlie Which still works Saturdays at CCO and volunteers three more days a week reading yourself. books for blind Minnesotans. The world of travelers was another world to us. Boone and Erickson are still good friends. Oh, Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon? Who just last year sold out eight performances of their radio review at the Old Log Theater. Just then, the prince rode up. And yes, if asked, they'll still do this. Good morning, good morning. It's grand to be on hand. Good morning, good morning to you. A little off key. A little bit, yeah. But that's the way it was. <laughs> if Boone and Erickson owned Here's mornings, updated. the night belonged December. to a good Joe. And this is Joe McFarland, McChicken. Down Norwood Lane in Minnetonka. Let me see her. The night right. still does. Here we go. Count Basie, down for double. For you younger folks, that's a record player. And this, Joe will tell you. Boy, what a band, huh? Is heaven. I would say what I miss the most is being able to play some very good music for some people who appreciate some very good music. <laughs> Joe's music is no longer heard beyond his walls, but the voices are out there. Joyce Lamont is here. Voices from a million old radios tucked in the place in our minds reserved for comforting thoughts, like warm memories of old neighbors. It's 11 o'clock, CCO temperature 50. This is WCCO. Among the other CCO names you may recognize, Chuck Lilligren is traveling, fishing, and lives in Ham Lake. Newsman Dick Chapman took his RV to Texas for the winter. And Maynard Spies lives in a Twin Cities nursing home, never having fully recovered from a stroke he suffered several years ago. Finally, we'd like to give our own Good Neighbor Awards to some folks who helped with this story. CCO newsman Steve Murphy and former engineer Bill Lund. Also, the Pavic Museum of Broadcasting in St. Louis Park. Paul and I, it's a great place to visit if you'd like to learn more about the history of radio and TV in the Twin Cities. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Boyd. You bet. Tomorrow night in the extra, the pursuit of youth and beauty with a little help from science. My clothes fit. I'm probably in two sizes smaller than I was uh, when I went in for my surgery. People are having plastic surgery in record numbers. Men, women, even new moms are changing their looks. Tomorrow at 10, we'll lay out the risks, the benefits, and the guidelines for choosing a surgeon. That's tomorrow night at 10 in the Extra.
All we need to change right now is the temperature and the weather. Temperature. Yeah, you know, this thing goes on and on and on. It's going to get warmer this weekend. We've already promised you that, but we also promised a mess. <laughs> and that's on the way, too. Let's get started with the weather spy tonight because it's pretty quiet out there now. We have some light snow and flurries falling in the Twin Cities, but with all the recent Arctic air, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but we have seen this kind of like a sun pillars right above the sun. See the, uh, the uh, kind of an optical illusion there streaking up from the sun? Those are the ice crystals bending the rays from the sun and making it appear as if there's a column of light above it. And uh, you can see that too at night sometimes as you're driving down the street and the street lights. Had a lot of emails and a lot of calls, so I know you may have seen them too. Look like columns or beams of light coming up out of the ground. It's from the same phenomena. Let's go on now to the weather for the day. We made it up to, uh, well, 10 degrees. That's it. Remember now, the average high is 29. The low this morning, 10 below zero here in the Twin Cities. We had the old heat island effect all around the metro area. It was well below that. In fact, some places such as Cambridge and Princeton and Moore were down in the 20s below zero, as was Lakeville this morning, 23 below zero. Eight right now, cloudy at the airport, south winds at 12, and the barometer is on the way down. It is, however, beginning to snow lightly here, and there'll be a coating to a half inch of snow by the time you wake up tomorrow morning. It's powdery and very light, so it won't be enough really to cause any major problems on the roadways. But just as a heads up, this little batch of snow will be moving through the overnight hours. And uh, although you're going to bed now and the roads are basically clear, when you wake up in the morning, there could be a fine coating of this very fresh and very light fluff on there. More important snow may be headed this way Friday night and Saturday, when then it could mix with or even change completely to rain or a mix of some kind of wintry mess. We continue to watch it. Three at Little Falls, five at St. Cloud, much warmer than last night at Litchfield. It's nine, Hutchinson is nine, New Richmond is three. Wind chill, well, it's not too bad, so we'll skip right over that and head to this. Light snow and flurries here in the Twin Cities, but as we've been pointing out since last week, a giant storm off the coast here of California is going to take aim of the Twin Cities. What it ultimate path will be, we still don't know, but it will head toward Iowa. How much warm air gets into the system and the exact path once this thing crashes onto shore here is what ultimately will determine if we in fact do get a winter snowstorm or if we get snow, then a mix, and then snow again. That looks like the most likely uh, theory right now for things to work out because the storm, the way it looks now, is going to head toward La Crosse. And with it coming that close to us, that exact path is still unknown, but if that is the path, it may give us enough warm air into the Twin Cities to give us that mix in between the snow batches. Either way, it could be a slushy mess this weekend. Here's our forecast overnight, perhaps a half inch or so with some periodic light snow, zero to five. We've already started the rise now, back to eight and headed toward 10 in the next few hours. Tomorrow, sun in the afternoon after a flurry, 22 to 27. Here comes the mess Friday night and Saturday. Saturday, we'll see a mix of rain and sleet and then changing back to snow here late Saturday night and Sunday. Stay tuned tomorrow night as this storm comes crashing ashore, Paul and I will continue to monitor it, but do know that we have a slushy mess on our hands for the weekend. Yeah, everybody's mm -hmm. on alert in the weather office. That's right. <laughs> no coffee tonight. Ooh, okay. Thank you. Coming up in sports with Randy Shaver. A huge night. Highlights of the Wild and the Stars, plus the Gophers on the road against the Badgers. And it's the Wolves and the Rockets at Target Center. Is the streak over? Find out next. Legendary Jeep vehicles continue to receive more and more and more awards. Now it's time to reward you with the Chrysler and Jeep Rewards Program. For a limited time, you can get 0.9% APR financing or a $2,000 cash allowance on both Jeep Grand Cherokee and Cherokee. So reward yourself today. Drive home one of our award winners, and that's better than taking home a trophy. See your Jeep dealer today. Career Fair 2001. Meet employers face-to-face -face at Southdale Mall, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., Tuesday, February 27th. Visit cpcjobfair.com for details. Presented by CARE 11. Co-sponsored by Minnesota Workforce Centers. KS95. Best grade. 80, 90, and today. Say so. Ooh, I love the way you love the way you love me. There's no Best variety. 80s, 90s, and today. It's time to come I listen at work. I love it. KS95. It's my. It's now. KS95. Oh, yeah. 
let's forget about it. KS95 plays the best variety of the 80s, 90s, and today. Hey kids, how big do you think Becker Furniture World is? Big! Oh, that's big. Well, how big is this? Uh, um, really big. It's bigger than anything. Million 180. Live. Why don't you bring your family in and find out just how big Becker Furniture World is. We're located on Highway 10 in Becker between Minneapolis and St. Cloud. Find what you're looking for at Becker Furniture World. Now, every time you visit Super America, we've made shopping with us a whole lot more rewarding. Because now you can win a million dollars, $10,000 cash or free gasoline for a year. Just pick up your free Be a Millionaire game booklet or game piece with secret code number every time you visit. Collect and save all your code numbers and match to new winning numbers posted in store every week. The Be a Millionaire giveaway, only at Super America. We're on your way, the convenience stores of Super America. Now get Super Mom's Glaze Ring Donuts, two for 79 cents. Disney's new movie, Recess, is a blast. A delightful family film. You're feverish. I'll go get the baby thermometer and the petroleum jelly. It's great fun. Hold the rope, boy. Recess school's out. Uh-oh. Please get off of me. Rady G, now in theaters. Brandon Shaver joins us now with sports. Not a good night for the Minnesota teams. Boy, just uh, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Up and down the, the gamut yeah. here tonight. The trade winds are still blowing, but nothing is set on Wally Zerbiak heading to Chicago for three players. The NBA trading deadline's tomorrow. Wolves head coach Flip Saunders said tonight there's no chance a deal will be made. Meanwhile, they lost again, this time to Houston. Wolves on the break at Target Center. Wally Zerbiak, the lay-in and foul. He finished with 20 points and eight rebounds. But Akeem Olajuwon of the Rockets outscored the Wolves 28 to 12 in the second quarter. The Dream had 13 points and 13 rebounds. Second half, KG 23 points, 15 boards, but he's about it. The Wolves bench was terrible tonight. Maurice Taylor finished with 21. The Rockets make it five straight losses for the Wolves. 89-83 the final. Gophers in a must win at Wisconsin tonight. Kevin Burleson hits the three. He finished with 14 and they are off to a blazing start. They led Wisconsin 20 to 7 at one point. Terrence Simmons for three. He had 23 points. The Badgers come back. Kirk Penny caught fire from the three-point line. He led a couple of big runs in the first and second halves. And back comes Wisconsin. He finished with 21. And the Badgers win by 10. 64-54 final. Gophers are off until they travel to Indiana next Wednesday night. The streak is over for the Minnesota Wild against Dallas. The Stars got their revenge for two previous losses by bouncing the Wild 6-2. First period, the Wild on the power play. Aaron Gaby feeds Lubomir Sekarish across the ice, and the Wild tie the game at 1. But after that, it's all stars. Brendan Morrow on the doorstep gets the loose puck of the goal. He added an assist in the final tonight. Wasn't even close. 6-2 final in favor of the Stars. Racing legend Dale Earnhardt was buried during a private ceremony today. A memorial service will be broadcast live on Fox Sports Net tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, driver Sterling Marlin, who was involved in that crash that killed Earnhardt Sunday, has received death threats and blame for the tragedy. A lot of drivers, NASCAR is called, uh, Childress is called, or people from Childress's organization. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated people's called and said, man, don't hang your head about nothing. Said you didn't do nothing wrong. It's just racing. And uh, you know, that's pretty all it was. Well, it's the eve of the girls' state hockey tournament, and the favorite to win it all has to be Blaine with the All-State goalie, Jody Horak. But she'll be tested tomorrow at noon by the Blake Bears. The girls' state hockey tournament opening up at the fairgrounds and look out for Catherine Moose. If that name sounds familiar, it's because her older cousin, Carolyn Moose, was a great basketball player at Blake. Carolyn's on scholarship at Stanford. The sophomore hockey player is blazing her own path, and she scored a hat trick in the section final to lead the Bears to state, and she's ready. We definitely, we, I think we started off a little slow, but we definitely picked things up, and obviously we showed it right now, but I don't know, we definitely picked it up at the end of the season when we needed to. It takes heart. Basically, that's all it is, and I think that's what we've, that's how we got here is heart, basically. They'll need a lot of heart tomorrow. Blaine's pretty good, undefeated this year. Blake and Blaine at noon tomorrow. Moorhead, South St. Paul at 2.15. And then it's Jefferson, Forest Lake, and Chaska Owatonna, the girls' state hockey tournament at the state fairgrounds. And a reminder, our live reports from Fort Myers 
and Twin Spring Training Camp begins tomorrow night at 10. The Twins have signed their best uh, players to long-term deals, so we're going to check in with them starting tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. 80 degrees there today. <laughs> Sorry to remember. Still a come. What your hairstyle says about you. But first, here's a look at tonight's winning Powerball numbers. We'll be right back. You're the only one with any frequent flyer miles around here. <laughs> <laughs> The new exciting sound in the Twin Cities. 1041 is the all new Mix 104, the 80s, and more. The music you've been waiting for all day, every day. Like Van Halen, Bon Jovi, Madonna. 1041 is the all new Mix 104, the 80s, and more. I didn't have health insurance. Thanks for not turning me away. You were there when there was no place to go for birth control. My mom had breast cancer, but you caught it in time. You stood up for generations of women. Planned Parenthood, we've been there. With your support, we'll always be there. Tonight, Jay's all new with the new Sports Illustrated swimsuit cover model, Elsa Benitez. Plus, Carrot Top and a rumble in the jungle. When classic TV stars fight it out in the semifinal round of Hollywood Survivor. And tomorrow, Jay's got Temptation Island, Shannon, Kaya, and Mandy. Then on Conan, Bob Dole, and ER score and this niche. All new tonight. It says nanny service on my front door, but really, I'm in the trust business. When I opened in 93, I went with the people I knew I could trust with my business. Dex. They guided me to the best mix of yellow page and internet directories. And I know that I'll always have access to the latest ways to connect with my customers. Nannies and families trust my service. And I trust Dex. Build your business every day with Dex. Premise. Take one of the best selling cars in America. Add extra features like an automatic transmission and air conditioning. Include a six-speaker stereo cassette with a CD player. All offered to you at some special savings. It's called the Accord Special Value Package from Honda. And it's proof that you can have your cake and eat it too. For a limited time, get special APR financing as low as 3.9% for 36 months on new four-cylinder Accords. Before we go, what's on top of your head may be the key to making a good first impression. In a new study, Yale researchers say women with long, blonde, straight hair come across as the most polished and sexy, but they were also seen as the most self-centered and careless. Women with long, dark, curly hair were seen as the least intelligent, while women with short, highlighted hair were rated as the most outgoing and open-minded. As for men, those with long hair were rated significantly less sexy and polished. Men with medium-length hair and a side part came across as the most intelligent, but men with short, highlighted hair seemed more confident. Now, take a look at these two. <laughs> <laughs> That is gross. <laughs> this is the, uh, the reincarnation of White Snake. Yeah. <laughs> That's the sassy Ken Barlow. Welcome, welcome back to the 70s. And the spicy Randy Shaver. Uh, uh, I, tr I tried that wig on two years ago when I didn't have hair. It yeah. looked pretty good then. <laughs> when you were at Barlow's house? <laughs> in a tenement house in New York City in the 40s. Imagine the hopes, joys, and conflicts of its residents. Imagine all of this as an opera with a Broadway musical feel. You just imagine street scene at the Minnesota Opera. Dayton's Project Imagine and CARE 11 are proud to support the arts. Looking for a great way to transport your valuables? Chevy Blazer. It has more overall passenger room than Jeep Cherokee and the largest displacement V6 engine in its class, standard. And now, the 2001 Blazer four-door comes with as low as .9 financing. That's $4,800 in average finance savings. 
Chevy Blazer with his lowest point nine financing at your Chevy dealer now. We think we found the solution to keeping you warm. I'm Frank Vassalero. I'm Kim Inslee. Thursday morning, we take you to Canada for the All Canada <laughs> Show. Oh, yeah. It's also Heart Health Month that continues with some tips on avoiding heart attacks. Join us. The news starts Thursday morning at 5 a.m. You're watching NBC, America's late night leader. From the NBC studios in Burbank, The Tonight Show.